Well, Rena Amiri is a policy and mediation advisor at NYU's Center, Center for International Cooperation and also a senior fellow at NYU's Center for Global Affairs. She has actually worked to settle conflicts in several countries, including her native Afghanistan. More than 95 Afghan civilians were killed in that attack, as you know, and people in Kabul are reacting to the bombings in various ways. This is a tough time, and there's also the potential threat of more attacks. So tell me, Rena, what has it been like uh, to hear from your friends and your family there in Afghanistan? What are they telling you? Thank you. Uh, first, I just want to express my condolences and prayers to the servicemen's families and the Afghans who lost so much life, including their children. It's been devastating. Um, they people at this they don't even have time to grieve this, this catastrophe that's taken place. And I, I still am getting calls from people saying. The doors are closing. Please help us leave. Uh, there's a real sense of desperation. And these are people who feel that they face risks either way. They will they face uh, potentially getting killed at the airport or uh, uh, being under threat and potentially getting killed by the Taliban. These are people who have been on kill lists. And, uh, and there's just a sense of feeling trapped and uh, and they know that the deadline is approaching and are praying that the U.S. will be able to do what it has said, which, uh, with, uh, which is that travel will be possible afterwards. And for that, there will have to be humanitarian orders. There will have to be the involvement of the U.N. and humanitarian agencies and, and bringing in the region to really make that happen. It's not going to happen without that type of diplomatic effort um, by the U.S. and the international community. Well, I want to talk more about those inside Kabul in, in a moment. But, you know, you also have have dealt with a number of conflicts, working to settle conflicts. And, you know, as you know, officials have now said that ISIS-K uh, is responsible for the attack. It has taken responsibility for the attack. What do you know about this terrorist group? Well, ISIS-K emerged in 2015. Um, it's... Uh and, uh, there was a shift of alliance from the Pakistani Taliban and some of the Afghan Taliban to this group. Um, they are a group of about 2,000. They used to be concentrated in the north and east, and now they've become more decentralized. They've been fighting with the Taliban over territory, over resources, over power. My concern is about ISIS, but my concern is also about a number of other terrorist groups. They are not the only group. We're talking about them right now because of the attacks. But there's the uh, terrorist groups from uh, the, from Central Asia. There are uh, There's the fact that the Taliban still maintain uh, a, a formal tie with, uh, um, with Al-Qaeda. You know, you know, the part of the peace agreement was that they would break that tie. Um, and that has, uh, they've never publicly uh, disavowed Al Qaeda. And what we have to watch out for is not just ISK, but from Afghanistan once again becoming a sanctuary for terrorism. In the last 20 years, the presence of US forces and the international community, uh, the efforts to create an inclusive government. All were designed not for nation building, but to protect uh, 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 the region and the world from terrorism. There is a lot of concern about the not just ISIS K, but yes, these other jihadists coming into this country uh, that is just in complete chaos right now. And there's also a lot of concern, Rena, as you know, about the U.S. working with the Taliban, wondering if you can trust the Taliban at this point uh, to help evacuate Americans. What do you think of that risk? I think right now the U.S. and the rest of us do not have any good choices in front of us. The Taliban control the country, and the only way to get people out is by working with the Taliban and through the Taliban. I think what it points to is that, and you know, during this phase, this is what we have to do. But going forward, you will need an inclusive government. You will need that diplomacy to, because we should not only be relying on the Taliban, where we are making a huge set of assumptions about what their interests are and how we can work with them. It is. The enemy of my enemy um, uh, mentality, that's never worked for us. So we need to continue pushing diplomatically for an inclusive government, which will moderate the Taliban. And for uh, monitoring and verification, we need the UN involved. We need to get eyes back on the situation in Afghanistan, both from a security point of view and from a human rights and humanitarian point of view. And for that, we, we need UN leadership. We 
really need to work through the region because we are no longer, you know, the U.S. has called the shots for the last 20 years. The U.S. is not going to be in that position. And it'll be absolutely key for the U.S. to work with the regional actors, including Russia, China, uh, Pakistan, and really uh, develop some sort of regional mechanism or support a regional mechanism in order to stabilize Afghanistan, prevent it from becoming a terrorist sanctuary, to protect the rights of the people inside the country, and to address the humanitarian crisis that is unfolding in front of our eyes. We'll be talking about all of that for weeks and months to come. Rena Amiri, thank you so much. Thank you.